This is Wes Berdine of the Denord Football Show and the Loon Call with a report from Minnesota United FC's training on October 29th. The Loons practiced in the indoor facility today and emerged from a morning video session to work on attacking play from the wings. I spoke first with forward Pablo Campos about returning from tearing his ACL and MCL to play in last week's loss against San Antonio. I also spoke with Manny Lagos about Campos's return and the upcoming match against the Carolina Railhawks. Check out my full report on thelooncall.com and listen to the Denord Football Show weekly on Stitcher, iTunes, and SoundCloud. You can find me on Twitter at MNNiceFC. Pablo, about, I guess it's seven months ago, you, you tore your ACL and your MCL, um, and you've, uh, you know, kind of publicly, you know, on Instagram and everything, been talking about coming back, and finally you come back in the last game for the last 15, 20 minutes. Can you tell me about the kind of feeling of finally being able to be back out there on the pitch? Um, yeah, you, uh, I think everybody knows how difficult it is, uh, you know, for an athlete to come back. Uh, especially after uh, you know a serious injury, it's uh, it's a lot of um, effort from from the club here, from owner, president, and, and coaching staff. I think the the medical staff too. They really really helped me to to have every everything that I needed and um, giving the the time that I I, I needed and. Uh, Every equipment and every clinic that are available to me, I think that uh, that's uh, was was the the most more important thing, and and I think uh, just my uh, will to come back quick to help this team to to get a, sh- a championship this year, yeah. and it it was uh, very uh, nice to be on the field, you know, on on Saturday. It's a great feeling. I never felt that before because I never had a. a like the seven months and expectations to come back and play and if everybody we uh, I stay in the, in the stands for seven months so uh, people were, uh, came to me and uh, well, you know ish, wished me uh, you know a fast recovery and they really meant that as they they would they saw Pablo Campos as a person not as an athlete there you know they really wished me to come back so it was a little bit. I I had that in my mind the whole time I was recovering. So it's a little bit for them too. I just wanna wish them uh, all the best, and I wanna uh, you know retribute the the out the the thing that they did to me. Yeah. So it's it's it was very good and uh, unique experience for me to come back. And how are you feeling? Are you feeling like you're back to uh, pre-injury, or are you still kind of uh, getting to that point at this point with your fitness? Uh, to be honest, my fitness is already there, you know, because before I got in the pitch, the coaches made sure that I had uh, some uh, fitness and I made, made sure I was fit. It's not like I, I, my knee, you know, got healthy and then, okay, let's put Pablo now. I, I, I was doing fitness for three weeks mm-hmm. prior to that. So it's, uh, so I'm very fit. It's just the rhythm of the game that's a little bit different then. But I'm, I don't, I don't feel that I have, uh, you know, surgical uh, knee right now. They just play normally. Of course, you're gonna have some issues here and there, like the explosion. And, but I, I, I feel great. That's the most important thing. Good. Are you just itching to score a goal now at this point? Well, no, <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> if I get, if I get on the field, they expect me to score goals. That's why I, they made sure that I, I was fit before, because uh, the pressure gonna come with that. It's not only, okay, Pablo's back for over seven months and. Uh, Let's see him on the pitch now. They want to see me to score. And I want to score for the people and all the fans and all the people here in the club that really, you know, helped me to get where I am at right now. So I, it's it's not only my personal uh, uh, wish, it's everybody else's. Manny, I want to talk about first last week, uh, the loss against San Antonio. Uh, it was the third chance you've kind of the team has had to kind of lock up the fall championship. 
Um, tell me about, is, is that frustration creeping in or what is your, how did you respond to that or what are you telling the team? I, I think there's a couple different levels when we, we talk about it as a club. Um, I think there's always, you're a little bit frustrated when you have a chance to uh, close out and, and uh, you know, get a championship and we didn't do that. So um, I think that's important that we acknowledge that because that's always our goal is to win championships for this club. Having said that, um, I, I think there is a, a level of complacency that's a reality about what the fall championship is. You know, our, our number one goal this year was first to win the spring championship, and the second was to clinch home field advantage, and that was done through the overall overall point total. So, um, I mean, you you could say last week and maybe a little bit of complacency came into us, but I think the reality was the the game. Uh, just wasn't our best day you know it wasn't our worst day you know that's not like San Antonio had a lot of chances it's just I think for the first time at home we maybe didn't create as many chances as we usually do uh, and I think that can be analyzed truthfully in a lot of different ways you know ultimately we just didn't play well enough to move the ball to create space to get chances ultimately maybe individuals on the field didn't quite do enough to uh, impose their personality and their will in the game and ultimately as a coaching staff maybe we didn't make the right moves to make sure we were both prepared mentally for that and also uh, within a game to, 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 to find a way to get a tie and a win. So regardless, I think we're going to learn from it. I think that the goal now is unique in that, uh, again, we have to prepare for this weekend and uh, make sure we're trying to build a momentum. I'm not sure if it 100% has to be necessarily uh, win or die this weekend. I don't think that's the case. I think the case is that we have to make sure that we use this weekend that we're going to be ready in you know approximately 10 days. Uh, to host the semifinals of the NSL championship. That uh, during the game of San Antonio, you, you started with a different formation that you've been using from what you've been using in the last few weeks. You had Rafael uh, Burgos in the hole and a couple other uh, changes with Brian Coleman. Uh, how did that look for you? What did that change about the team? I know you changed it about halftime or, or a little after, but. Yeah, you know, it. it if you, if you go back and watch the tape, I mean, it's, it's nice to have this interview a couple of days later. So I could say the first 15 minutes in terms of the middle of the field and the movement and defensively, I thought we were really sharp, actually, and really kind of setting a tone. Uh, it, from that, though, we didn't quite create the tempo to really create chances. And I, I think that's where, um, you know, maybe a little bit of frustration that you can hear my voice right now about the game, because I think that was a time where if we picked it up in that second 30 minutes of the first half, I think we see the game out much differently versus having to navigate when San Antonio came out and, and got a, a decent goal against us. So um, specifically, uh, you know, I think it's, it's Rafa's done a great job coming off the bench for us. You know, it was his first start, and I think that's his own stress has come into that play, and I don't think it's all on him. I think there was other guys in the field, too, that maybe we didn't quite bring him into the game we would have liked to. I think he'd put his hand up and say, you know what, not, not my best day, but um, that's all part of a learning curve, you know, and like I said, I, I think there was still a lot of positives within that. Uh, that game that, you know, set up how we're going to get ready for this weekend and the playoffs. San Antonio had a particularly good day in def defense by bunkering in and kind of trying to play the counterattack. How is the team, how are you looking forward to, to set the team up to break down those kind of bunker defenses? Sure, right. Teams <coughs> I mean, start employing it. Yeah, we had a big video session today going over the San Antonio game and also talking about how we want to kind of approach the, the next couple weeks. And, and certainly, I think for us, uh, it kind of starts with us, you know, a, a twofold thing. I think it starts with us offensively just talking about how we change the tempo and the key parts of the field to both uh, have better combination in the middle field and then also create space wide for us to attack those areas as well. So um, for us, we, we really are going to address how important it is if teams set a block, where we are moving in the middle of the field to create space wide or attacking the channels to make sure we get in bodies in the box. It was great to see Pablo back finally from his injury, um, uh, and he got out there for about 15 minutes or so. So, uh, no, it, it's probably a far cry to think he'll play a significant role in the the final games and, and the playoffs. But uh, last year when he was played, he was often played with a striker next to him. Uh, 
how does it look for thinking about Christian and Pablo, at least you know for the end part of a game, working together? Have you have you tried that or looked at like that four four two? Um, yeah, I, I think we'll we'll just start with the, the fact that uh, it was exciting to see Pablo out there again. I I, I got a chance in a post game interview to thank our medical staff for the work they've done, uh, to thank uh, Pablo for his uh, passion and wanting to get back this year. And then also our, our players who uh, also worked with him to try to get him and keep his mind a part of this team. So uh, it was exciting to see that. And I think he got thrown into a pretty physical part of the game and, and did pretty well and, and really kind of uh, you know focalized uh, a point where we needed a little more focal uh, attack. So it was just nice to see that kind of um, intensity out of him, out of the game, and that he handled it well. So going forward, it, it's nice that it opens up opportunities for us to think about things like him and Christian together, to think about him uh, as a sub as he, t- he continues to get better. Um, you know, certainly some of the stuff you're alluding to uh, probably is more appropriate as we have a, a full uh, fulcrum of a season with the preseason and, and thinking about, uh, you know, different ways we're going to play. Having said that, anytime you have good offensive players as options, it opens up a little bit more about things you can do, and, and certainly we uh, are going to prepare uh, if we have to uh, make changes uh, in different ways, like you said and you alluded to. You're listening to the DeNord Football Show from Minneapolis, Minnesota.